Alice Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. The audiobook is presented by English Lessons for Students. Alice falls down a rabbit's hole. She has a magical adventure and meets many strange characters. Some of them are the Dodo. The Dodo was a large bird that could not fly. It lived on the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean. The Mad Hatter. A hatter is a person whose job is to make hats. Hatters used a chemical containing mercury. As the hatters walked, they breathed in the chemical. It affected their brains and made them ill. If someone acts crazy, people say that he or she is as mad as a hatter. The Cheshire Cat Cheshire cheese is a type of cheese that was made in the shape of a cat. It had a big smile. The cheese was made in Cheshire, a place in England. As you ate the cheese, the cat slowly disappeared. Sometimes the smile was the last bit eaten. The Mock Turtle The Mock Turtle was not a real turtle. Mock means fake, not real. Turtle soup was very expensive, so people made mock or fake turtle soup. Mock turtle soup was actually made out of a young cow's head about Lois Carroll. Lois Carroll was the pen name of Charles Dawson. Charles Dawson was born in 1832 in England. He was a teacher of mathematics. One summer day in 1862, Dawson was out with some friends. They were rowing a boat on the river. It was very hot. They decided to rest in a shady place. Three little girls, Alice, Arias, and Lorena, Little were with them. While they were resting, 10 years old, Alice asked Dobson to tell a story. He made up the story as he was telling it. Later, he wrote it down as Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. The book was very successful. Later, he wrote another book about Le Alice called Through the Looking Glass. Dobson enjoyed word games and puzzles. He used some of them in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. One type of word game he used was a riddle. Here is one of Dobson's riddles. Dreaming of apples on a wall and dreaming of a deer. I dreamed that if I counted all, how many would appear? Can you guess the answer? Hint. Look carefully at the words in line 2. Down the rabbit hole. A rabbit with a watch. Alice had nothing to do. She was sitting by the river with her big sister, but that was not interesting. Once or twice she looked at the book her sister was reading. There were no pictures in it. What good is a book without pictures? Alice thought. It was very hot and she felt tired. Then, quite suddenly, she saw a rabbit. It was a white rabbit and it had pink eyes. It ran close by her. This was not very strange. Alice thought she knew that lots of rabbits lived near the river. Then Alice heard the rabbit speak. He said to himself, Oh dear, oh dear, I am going to be late. Alice was not too surprised. She thought all animals could speak. Then the rabbit took a watch out of his coat pocket. He looked at the watch, put it back in his pocket and hurried on. That did surprise Alice. She had never seen a rabbit wearing a coat before or using a watch. She stood up quickly and ran across the field after the rabbit. Then she saw it go into a large rabbit hole down the rabbit hole. Alice went into the hole after the rabbit. Alice could not see very well. Suddenly she was falling. She was falling down and down into a very deep hole. Alice fell quite slowly. She had time to look at the things around her. She looked at the sides of the hole. She could see lots of cupboards and shelves. She took a jar from one of the shelves. The words owing jam were written on it. Alice liked eating jam, but she had never heard of orange jam before. She opened the jar, but it was empty. She put it back carefully. Down, down, down. Would the fall never come to an end? How many miles have I fallen now? She asked herself. I must be getting somewhere. 
near the center of the earth suddenly she stopped she fell on to some dry leaves and sticks alice was not hurt she jumped up quickly onto her feet in front of her was another long tunnel she saw the ra white rabbit he was hurrying down it alice ran after him quickly she heard him say oh dear oh dear it is very very late then he went round a corner when alice go to the corner she couldn't see him anywhere the beautiful garden she was standing in a long low hall there were lots of lights hanging from the ceiling there were doors all round the hall alice tried to open them they were all locked she saw a little glass table with three legs there was a small gold key on it then she noticed a low curtain behind it was a little door about 15 inches high she tried the little gold key in the lock the door opened alice bent down and looked through she saw a small tunnel and at the end of it a very beautiful garden oh I would like to go into that nice garden, she thought, but she was too big to get into the tunnel. I wish I could make myself smaller, thought Alice. She locked the little door and went back to the table. This time, she found a little bottle on the table. She put the key on the table and picked up the bottle. This wasn't here before, Alice said. Around the table was a paper label, label with the words, drink me on it first. Alice tasted it carefully. It was very nice. So then she drank it all. Alice grows smaller. What a strange feeling, said Alice. Everything seems to be getting bigger. Perhaps I am getting smaller. She was getting smaller. She was now only 10 inches high. She felt very happy. She was just the right size to go through the little door into that lovely garden. When she arrived at the door, she found she had forgotten to bring a little gold key. When she went back to the table, it was too high for her. So she sat down and cried. Well, well, it is silly to cry like that, Alice said to herself. Stop crying at once. Then she saw a little glass box under the table. There was a very small cake inside it with the words, eat me on it. Well, I'll eat it, said Alice. Perhaps it will make me now grow bigger then i can reach the key if it makes me grow smaller i can go under the door i'll get into the garden one way or the other she ate a little of the cake she put her hand on to the top of her head she wanted to see which way she was growing she was quite surprised nothing was happening so very quickly she ate the whole cake the pool of tears, Alice cries again. This feels very strange, said Alice. Now I'm getting bigger again. She looked down at her feet. They were far away. Just then her head hit the roof of the hall. She was now more than nine feet high. She could get the key easily. She picked it up and ran up to the garden door. But of course, the tunnel was much too small. Poor Alice, she would never be able to get into the lovely garden. She sat down and began to cry again. What a silly girl. She said to herself to cry like this. Stop at once, I tell you. But she went on crying. The tears from her eyes made a big pool all around her. It was four inches deep and went right down the hall. A short time later, she heard the sound of someone walking Quickly, she dried her eyes. It was a white rabbit. He had two beautiful white gloves in one hand and a large fan in the other. He was saying to himself, The Duchess will be angry if I keep her waiting. Oh, the Duchess, the Duchess. By now, Alice was getting tired of sitting on the floor when the white rabbit came near her. Alice decided to ask him for help. Please, sir, she said in a quiet, shy voice. The white rabbit saw Alice. He was so frightened that he dropped his fan and his gloves. Then he ran away down the hall as fast as he could into the garden. Alice picked up the fan. She began fanning herself because the hall was very hot. All the time she kept saying to herself, Well, well, how strange everything is today. Did I change in the night? 
was I the same when I go go top this morning? If I am not the same, the next question is, who am I? Just then she looked down at her hands. She was surprised to see that she had put on one of the white rabbit's white gloves while she was talking. How can I have done that? She thought I must be growing small again. Then she got up and went to the table. She found that she was now about two feet high and getting smaller and smaller very quickly. And now for the garden, said Alice. Quickly, she ran to the little door, but it was locked. She looked for the little golden key. She did not have it. It was lying on top of the table again. Now I am smaller than I was before, said Alice. As she said this, she fell into salt water that came right up to her neck. Alice thought that she had fallen into the sea, but then she remembered when she was nine feet high she had been crying now she was swimming in a pool of tears the mouse i wish i hadn't cried so much said alice as she swam around just then she heard something swimming in the water it was making a lot of noise at first she thought it must be an elephant but it was only a mouse it had fallen into the pool of tears too shall i speak to that mouse alice thought to herself Oh, mouse, she began, do you know the way out of this pool? I am very tired of swimming around here. The mouse didn't say anything. Perhaps it doesn't speak English, thought Alice. Perhaps it is a French mouse. Alice only knew one word in French. It was the word for cat. She tried saying that when she said this, the mouse was very frightened. It jumped right out of the water. Oh, I am sorry said Alice in English. I forgot that you didn't like cats. Would you like cats if you were a mouse? replied the mouse. It spoke in English too. Well, perhaps not, said Alice. But don't be angry. I wish I could show you our cat. I think you would like her. Her name is Diana. Diana. She is very nice to touch and she is very good at catching mice. Oh, I am sorry, Alice said quickly. We won't talk about her again. No, we won't, said the mouse. It was so frightened that it was shaking right down to the end of its tail. Our family always hated cats. Please don't let me hear the name cat again. Strange animals. Oh, no, I won't, said Alice, because now she wanted to talk about something else. Do you like dogs? The mouse did not answer, but Alice went on. There is a very nice little dog near our house. He has big brown eyes. If you throw things to him, he picks them up and brings them back to you. He belongs to a farmer. The farmer says, he is very useful. He kills all the rats and, oh, dear said Alice. But it was too late. The mouse was swimming away from her as fast as it could. She called softly after it. Mouse dear, do come back again. We won't talk about cats or dogs if you don't like them. When the mouse heard this, it swam slowly back to her. Its face was quite white. In a low quiet voice, it said, let us swim to the land. That's a good idea thought Alice. The pool was getting quite crowded. Four birds, a duck, a dodo, a parrot and a small eagle were swimming close to her. There were some other strange animals near her too. Alice went first. The animals swam after her until they all go to dry land. A caucus race. The dodo's idea. The animals sitting on dry land looked very, very funny. They were all very wet. Of course, they had to get dry again. Everybody talked about what they should do. After a few minutes, Alice was talking to everybody, just as if they were old friends. She even had a long argument with the parrot. He became quite angry. He said to Alice, I am older than you and so I must know more than you. Well, how old are you? asked Alice, but the parrot would not tell her. Then the dodo said, a caucus race would get us try. What is a caucus race? said Alice. She didn't really want to know, but she thought it would be polite to ask. Well, said the dodo, the best way to explain it is to do 
it. That is, first the dodo marked out a very big circle on the ground, then everybody had to stand on different parts of the circle. Nobody called out one, two, three, go. You could start running when you wanted, you could run anywhere you liked when you felt tired you could stop it wasn't easy to know when the race began or when it finished after half an hour everybody was dry again the dog took all over the race is over all the animals sat down someone asked who has won the dog thought carefully he sat for a long time with his hand on his head everybody waited silently at last the dog said everybody has won and everybody must have a prize but who is to give the prizes everybody asked well she is of course said the dog pointing to alice with one finger everybody crowded round her calling prizes prizes alice gets a prize Alice didn't know what to do. She put her hands into her pockets and pulled out a bag of sweets. She gave one to everybody. There were just enough. But she must have a prize too, said the mouse. Of course, the daughter replied. He turned to Alice and said, What else have you got in your pocket? Only a button, said Alice sadly. Give it to me, said the daughter. Then they all crowded round her once more. The dodo gave the button to Alice. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, I give Alice this prize for winning the carcass race. Everybody was pleased and they all shouted with excitement. Alice wanted to laugh but the animals looked very serious. She couldn't think of anything to say. She just took the button and gave a little bow. The birds are frightened. Then everybody ate the sweets. The animals made a lot of noise. Some thought the sweets were too big. The larger animals said the sweets were so small they could not taste them. When everybody had finished, Alice began to think of Dinah the cat. She suddenly said, I wish Dinah was here. And who is Dinah? asked the parrot. Dinah's our cat. Alice replied, she is very good at catching mice and I wish you could see her chasing the birds. She can catch them and eat them very quickly. Everyone went very quiet. One by one, the birds hurried away. Soon all the animals had gone and Alice was by herself. I wish I hadn't said anything about Dinah. She said sadly, nobody seems to like her down here. I'm sure she is the best cat in the world. Then poor Alice began to cry. She felt very sad. A little while later, she heard the sound of feet again. The White Rabbit's House Gloves for the White Rabbit it was the white rabbit again. He seemed to be looking for something. He was saying to himself, the duchess, the duchess. Oh, she will be so angry with me. Where can I have dropped them? Alice thought that he meant his fan and his white gloves. So she began to look for them too, but she couldn't see them anywhere. Very soon, the white rabbit saw Alice in an angry voice. He called out, well, Marianne, what are you doing here? Go home immediately and bring me some clean gloves and a fan. Quick now! Alice was frightened. She jumped up and ran to where the rabbit was pointing. She did not stop to tell the rabbit that he had made a mistake. He thinks I am his servant. She said to herself as she ran, he will be very surprised when he finds out I am not Mary Ann. But I look for his fan and his gloves if I can find them. Just then she came to a little house with the name w rabbit written on the door she went in without knocking and hurried up the stairs she was a little frightened that the real mary ann would meet her would mary ann make her leave the house before she could find the fan and gloves how strange it seems alice said to herself to be looking for gloves for a rabbit alice grows big Alice came to a tidy little room. There was a table near the window. On the table were a fan and two white gloves. She picked up the fan and the gloves. She was just leaving the room when she saw a little bottle in front of the mirror. It didn't have anything written on it, but Alice decided to drink it. I know something interesting will happen, she said to herself. It always does when I eat or drink something. I hope it will make me grow big again because I am tired of being so small 
that is just what happened before alice had drunk even half of the bottle her head was touching the ceiling and she had to bend it down she put the bottle down quickly she said to herself that's quite enough i hope i won't grow anymore but she went on growing and growing soon she had to get down on her knees then she tried lying on the floor but still she grew so she put one arm out of the window and one foot up the chimney and said to herself now i can't do anything else what will happen to me alice didn't grow any bigger but she couldn't think how to get out so she felt unhappy again after a few minutes she heard a voice she stopped to listen marianne marianne said the voice get me my gloves immediately then she heard the sound of feet walking up the stairs it was the white rabbit coming to look for her she became quite frightened she forgot that she was a thousand times bigger than him in the house the white rabbit came up to the door and tried to open it alice's arm was pressed hard against the door the white rabbit couldn't get in alice heard it say i'll go to the front of the house and get in uh, at the window no you won't thought alice when she heard the white rabbit just under the window she tried to catch him she didn't catch anything but she heard a little cry a fall and the noise of glass breaking next came an angry voice pat pat where are you it said she heard a voice answer here i am sir here said the white rabbit come and help me get out of this there were sounds of more broken glass now tell me pat what's that in the window it's an arm sir an arm how can it be an arm it's much too big but that's what it is sir it is an arm well what is it doing there it shouldn't be there go and take it away there was a long silence after this alice heard sound now and then and people talking alice moved her hand again there were more sounds of broken glass i wish they would pull me out of the window alice thought i don't want to stay here any longer suddenly stones came flying through the window some of them hit her in the face i'll make them stop this she said to herself she shouted out don't do that everybody was silent again alice was surprised to see the stones all turning into little cakes a clever idea came into her head if i eat one of these cakes perhaps it it will make me smaller she so she ate one immediately she began to get smaller when she was small enough to get through the door she ran out of the house a crowd of little animals and birds was standing outside the door they all ran to catch alice but she ran away soon she found herself in the middle of the thick forest as she walked about in the forest alice thought i must go to that lovely garden but first i must go to my right size again let me see how can i do it i suppose i should eat or drink something alice looked all around her at the flowers and the grass she could not see anything to eat or drink there was a large mushroom growing near her she looked under it and on both sides of it and behind it then she thought that she would see what was on the top of it she stood up and looked over the edge of the mushroom there she saw a large blue caterpillar it was sitting on the top of the mushroom in its mouth it had a long pipe it was quite please smoking the pipe the caterpillar who are you the caterpillar and alice looked at each other for some time no one said anything at last the caterpillar took the pipe out of his mouth who are you it asked in a very sleepy voice i don't know sir i have changed four or five times since this morning said alice what do you mean by that said the caterpillar explain yourself I can't explain myself sir said Alice because I am not myself you see I don't see said the caterpillar I am afraid it is too difficult to explain Alice replied very politely because I can't understand it myself one day you will have to turn into a butterfly you will find that quite strange won't you not at all said the caterpillar well said Alice I know it would feel very strange to me you said the caterpillar angrily but 
Who are you? The caterpillars questions. Now they had come back to the beginning of their talk. Alice was quite angry about the way the caterpillar spoke. She stood up straight. She looked hard at the caterpillar. She said, I think you should tell me who you are first. Why? said the caterpillar. Here was another question that Alice couldn't answer. The caterpillar seemed to be feeling angry. So Alice turned and walked away. Come back, the caterpillar called after her. I have something important to tell you. This seemed interesting, so Alice came back again. Now don't get angry, said the caterpillar. Is that all? said Alice, trying not to sound angry. No, said the caterpillar. Alice thought she should wait since she had nothing else to do. Perhaps the caterpillar would tell her something interesting. The caterpillar sat smoking his pipe for a few minutes then he took the pipe out of his mouth again he said so you think you have changed do you i'm afraid i have sir said alice i can't remember things and i am always getting bigger or smaller three inches is a good height what size do you want to be asked the caterpillar Oh, I don't care about size alice replied quickly but i don't like changing so much you know I don't know, said the caterpillar. Alice said nothing. She was beginning to get angry again. Are you happy now, said the caterpillar. Well, I would like to be a little bigger, sir, said Alice. Three inches is not a nice height to be. It is a very good height, said the caterpillar angrily. He stood up as he spoke. He was three inches high too. But I don't like being so small, said poor Alice sadly. And she thought to herself, I wish this caterpillar would not become angry so quickly. You will get used to it, said the caterpillar. It put the pipe into its mouth and began smoking it again. The mushroom. This time Alice waited quietly until the caterpillar was ready to say something. The caterpillar took the pipe out of his mouth. Then he got down off the mushroom saying one side of the mushroom will make you grow taller. The other side will make you grow shorter. A few seconds later he was gone. Alice looked at the mushroom carefully. Then she broke off a piece with each hand. She ate a little piece. The next moment she was becoming smaller and smaller. Quickly, she ate some from the other piece. A moment later, when she looked down, she saw only her neck. It was very, very long. Where have my shoulders gone? said Alice. And, oh, my poor hands, I can't see you at all. She moved her neck and it bent easily. Then a large pigeon flew near her face. Snake, shouted the pigeon angrily. I'm not a snake, said Alice. Go away and leave me alone, snake. I say again, repeated the pigeon in a quieter voice. I have tried everything, but they still come back. I don't know what you are talking about, said Alice. Snakes, I can't get away from them, the pigeon said. Alice still couldn't understand what it was talking about. She waited until the pigeon had finished. The pigeon's eggs. It is so hard keeping my eggs safe from snakes, said the pigeon. I have to watch out for snakes from morning until night. I haven't been able to sleep for three weeks. I am very sorry for you, said Alice. She was just beginning to understand. Now I have found the tallest tree in the forest, the pigeon continued in a loud voice. And you come down from the sky, snake? But I am not a snake, said Alice. Well, what are you, said the pigeon. I'm, I'm a little girl, said Alice. I don't believe that, said the pigeon. I have never seen a girl with a neck like yours. No, no, you are a snake. Please don't tell me you are something else. I suppose you have never eaten an egg. I have eaten eggs. Of course, said Alice. Little girls like to eat eggs too, you know. I don't believe it, said the pigeon, but if they do, then they are just the same as snakes. Back to the right size. That was a new idea to Alice, and it made her keep quiet. The pigeon then added, you are looking for eggs? I know you are, 
but I am not looking for eggs. I don't want your eggs. Go away then, said the pigeon. She sat down again on her eggs. Alice remembered the pieces of mushroom in her hands. She started eating them again. At last, she was back to her normal height. How funny all these changes are, she said to herself. I am never sure what I am going to be. Now I am back to my right size. The next thing is to get into the beautiful garden. Just then she saw a little house about four feet high. Who lives there? thought Alice. Well, it wouldn't be nice to meet them while I am this size. They would be very frightened to see me. So she began to eat a little piece of the mushroom until she grew smaller. Soon she was nine inches high. Pig and Pepper A Fish and a Frog a servant came running out of the forest. He looked quite like a fish and he was wearing very strange clothes. He knocked very loudly on the door of the little house. The door was opened by another servant. This servant was wearing very strange clothes too. He had a round face and large eyes. He looked like a frog. Alice wanted to know what was happening. She moved closer to listen. The first servant gave a very large letter to the other. He said in a low voice for the duchess from the queen. Then they both both to each other. The first servant left. The second servant walked out of the house. He closed the door and sat on the ground in front of it. Alice went quietly up to the door and knocked. How can I get in? There is no use knocking, said the servant. I am on the same side of the door as you are so i won't come to open it also no one can hear you it was true there was a lot of noise inside the house please tell me then said alice how can i get in i shall sit here the servant said till until tomorrow how can i get in said alice again in a louder voice are you going to get in at all said the servant that's the first question you know. It's really very bad, she said to herself. All these animals talk in such a silly way. They make me so angry. I shall sit here, the servant repeated for days and days. But what am I going to do, said Alice. Anything you like, said the servant. He began to sing. Oh, it is stupid to talk to him, said Alice. And she opened the door and went in. A cat that smiles. There was a large kitchen which was full of smoke. There was the duchess. She was sitting on a chair holding a baby. The cook was standing near the fire looking at a large pot. It was full of soup. There is too much pepper in that soup, Alice said to herself. She began to sneeze. There was too much pepper. It was not just in the soup. It was in the air too. Even the duchess sneezed every few seconds. The poor baby was sneezing and crying without stopping. Only the cook and a large cat did not sneeze. The cat was sitting near the fire. It was smiling a big happy smile. Please tell me something, said Alice a little shyly. Why does your cat smile like that? It's such a shy cat, said the duchess, and that's why pig, she said the last word loudly and angrily. Alice was frightened, but the duchess was talking to the baby. Alice said, I don't know that Cheshire cat smiled like that. I didn't know that cats could smile. They all can, said the duchess, and most of them do. I don't know any that do, Alice said very politely. Then you don't know very much, said the duchess, the baby. Alice did not like the way the duchess said this. She tried to think of something else to say. Then the cook took the soup off the fire. She began to throw pots, glasses, plates and dishes at the duchess and the baby. The duchess didn't seem to see them even when they hit her. The baby was making a lot of noise but Alice did not know if it was hurt or not. Oh, please be careful, said Alice. A large pot almost hit the baby on the nose. Suddenly the duchess looked up at Alice. Cut off her head, she said in a very loud voice. Alice looked at the cook to see what she would do, but the cook was busy with her soup. The duchess stood up. She said, here you can look after the baby, and she threw the baby at Alice. I must get ready to visit the queen, and she hurried out of the room. The cook threw another pot at her as she went out. It just missed her. Funny noises. 
Alice caught the baby. It was a strange little thing. It held out its arms and legs in all ways. It was very difficult for Alice to hold it. As she carried it out into the garden, the little thing made a funny noise. Don't make that funny noise, said Alice. That's not the right way for a baby to talk. The baby made the same funny noise again and Alice looked very carefully into its face. She thought its eyes were very small. Perhaps it was only crying, she said and looked at its eyes again. No, it wasn't crying. If you are changing into a pig, my dear, said Alice. Seriously, I won't speak to you anymore. Be careful now. The poor little thing made a funny noise again. Alice walked on for some time without saying anything then the baby made a very loud noise alice looked down at its face this time there could be no mistake it was a pig alice asks the way alice put the little animal down it ran off quickly into the forest then she noticed the cheshire cat it was sitting in a tree just in front of her the cheshire cat smiled when it saw Alice, it looked friendly, she thought. Cheshire Cat, she began quite shyly. Would you tell me, please, which way I should go from here? First, you must tell me where you want to get to, said the cat. I don't care very much where, said Alice. Then it doesn't matter which way you go, said the cat. As long as I get somewhere, Alice explained. Oh, you are sure to do that, said the cat. As long as you walk for far enough. Everyone is mad. Alice thought that this was true. She tried another question. What sort of people live around here? A hatter and a march hare. Visit them if you like. They are both mad. But I don't want to meet mad people, Alice said. We are all mad here, said the cat. I am mad. You are mad. How do you know I am mad, said Alice. You must be, said the cat. Oh, you wouldn't have come here. Alice wasn't sure what to say next. Then the cat asked, Are you going to visit the queen today? She is going to play croquet. I would like to very much, said Alice. But no one has asked me yet. You will see me there, said the cat. Oh, and what happened to the baby? I almost forgot to ask you. It turned into a pig, Alice said quietly. I thought it would be, said the cat and disappeared. A smile without a cat. Alice then walked on. I have seen hatters before, said Alice. They are just people who make hats. The march here will be the most interesting. As she said this, she looked up. There was the Cheshire cat again sitting up in a tree. I wish you wouldn't keep appearing and disappearing so much, said Alice. All right, said the cat. This time it disappeared quite slowly. We beginning with the end of the tail and ending with its smile the smile stayed for some time after the cat had gone well i've often seen a cat without a smile thought alice but a smile without a cat that's the strangest thing i ever saw soon she came to the house of the march here she thought it must be the right house because the chimneys looked like rabbit's ears it was a very big house so she ate some of the mushroom this made her two feet high she felt a little frightened as she walked to the house she said to herself what if the march here is really quite mad after all a mad tea party no room there was a tree in front of the house under the tree there was a table the march here and the Hatter were having their tea. A large mouse was sitting between them. It was sleeping. The march here and the hatter were using the mouse as a cushion. They were resting their arms on it. That must be very comfortable for the mouse, thought Alice. But I suppose it doesn't care if it is asleep. The table was a large one, but the three were all very, cl very close together at one end. When they saw Alice coming, they cried out, there is no room, no room. There is a lot of room, said Alice angrily. Then she sat down on a large chair next to the march here. Have a glass of wine, said the march here in a friendly voice. Alice looked all around the table, but there was only tea. I don't see any wine, she said. There isn't any, said the march here. Then it wasn't very polite of you. 
to ask me to have some said alice angrily it wasn't very polite of you to come here and sit down no one asked you to do that said the marsh here i didn't know it was your table said alice it has places for more more than three people your hair needs cutting said the hatter he had been looking carefully at alice and this was the first thing he had said you should not say things about other people said alice it is not polite a word game when he heard this the hatter opened his eyes very wide then he said why is a bird like a writing desk oh good we are going to have some fun now thought alice i like playing word games i think i can guess that she added aloud do you mean you know the answer to it said the marsh hare yes that is what i mean said alice then you should say what you mean said the marsh hare i do alice replied quickly well i mean what i say that's the same thing you know it is not the same thing at all said the hatter if it is true then i see what i eat is the same as i eat what i see or you might say added the marsh hare that i like what i get is the same thing as i get what i like or you might say added the mouse who seemed to be talking in his sleep that i breathe when i sleep is the same thing as i sleep when i breathe it is the same thing with you said the hatter alice tried to think of everything she knew about birds and writing desks the others were quiet while she thought have you guessed the answer yet said the hatter no i don't know alice replied what is the answer i don't know said the hatter i only know the question speaking to time well said alice i wish you wouldn't waste time by asking questions that have no answers you don't know time as well as i do if you did you wouldn't talk about wasting it it's him not it i don't know what you mean said alice of course you don't the hatter said angrily you have never spoken to time no i don't think i have said alice well you should said the hatter speak politely to time and he will do anything you like with the clock let me explain what i mean suppose it is 9 o'clock in the morning just the time to begin your lessons if you spoke politely to time he would make the clock go round to half past 12 time to eat I thought about it a little that would be nice she said but I wouldn't be hungry not at first perhaps said the hatter but you could keep the clock at half past 12 for as long as you liked is that what you do Alice asked the cruel queen the hatter shook his head sadly not me he replied We had an argument last March that was just before he became mad the hatter pointed to the march here the queen of hearts gave a concert he continued and i had to sing a song after i had finished the first part of my song i stopped i wanted a little rest then the queen jumped up she shouted he is killing the time cut off his head how very cool said alice Ever since then the hatter went on in a sad voice time won't do a thing i ask it's always 6 o'clock now a clever idea came into alice's head is that why there are so many things on the table she asked yes that's right said the hatter it's always tea time here we don't have time to wash the dishes in between then you keep moving round the table i suppose said alice That's right said the hatter as things get used up have some more tea the march hare said to alice i haven't had any yet alice replied in a quite loud voice so i can't have any more you mean you can't have any less said the hatter it is very easy to have more than nothing nobody asked you to speak said alice now you are not being polite said the hatter alice didn't know how to reply to this she took some tea and some bread and jam i want to clean up said the hatter said let's all move round one place he moved on as he spoke the mouse followed him the march hare moved into the mouse place alice had to sit where the march hare had been sitting alice didn't like sitting in the march hare's place because he had split 
some milk on the table. This made Alice angry. She stood up and quickly walked away. The mouse fell asleep immediately. Alice goes into the beautiful garden. The hatter and the march here did not see Alice again going. She looked back once or twice, hoping that they would call her back. The last time she saw them, they were trying to put the mouse into the teapot. Well, I'll never go back there again, said Alice. It's the silliest tea party I have ever been to in my life. Just as she said this, she saw that one of the trees had a door. That's very strange, she thought. But everything's strange today. Why don't I go in? And in she went. Once more, she found herself in the long hall. She was standing close to the little glass table. Now it will be easier for me, she said to herself. She took the little gold key and opened the door that went into the garden. Then she ate a piece of mushroom that she had kept in her pocket when she was about a foot high she walked through the door at last she was in the beautiful garden all around her were lovely flowers and tall green trees the queen's croquet game the gardeners there was a large rose tree near the garden gate the roses were white but three gardeners were busy painting them red Alice thought this was strange, so she went nearer to watch them. Just as she came closer, one of them said, Be careful now, Five. Don't get paint all over me. I'm sorry, said Five. Simon touched me with his arm. When he said this, Simon looked up. That's nice, Five, he said. You are always trying to get other people into trouble. You should be careful, said Five. I heard the queen say yesterday that you should have your head cut off. What for, said the one who had spoken first. It's nothing to do with you, too, said Seven. Yes, it is, said Five, and I'll tell him it was for bringing the cooked potatoes instead of cabbages. Seven threw down his brush, then he saw Alice as she stood watching. The others looked round too, they all bowed to her. The queen comes. Would you tell me, said Alice a little shyly, why you are painting those roses? Five and seven said nothing but looked at two. Two began in a low voice. Well, the truth is, miss, this should have been a red rose tree. We put a white one in by mistake. If the queen finds out, we will all have our hands cut off. So you see, miss, we are doing our best before she comes. At this moment, five who had been looking across the garden called out, the queen, the queen, the three gardeners immediately threw themselves flat upon the ground. There was a sound of many people walking along. Alice looked to see who was coming. First came ten soldiers. They were carrying long sticks. The soldiers all looked the same as the three gardeners. They were thin and flat with their hands and feet as the, at the corners. Next came the queen's servants. They were walking in twos like the soldiers. After these came the queen's ten children. They came jumping happily along holding hands. They were all wearing little hearts. Next came the friends of the king and queen. Most of them were kings and queens too. Alice saw the white rabbit. He was talking very quickly as if he was frightened. He went by without seeing Alice. Then came two servants carrying the king's crown on a dark blue cushion. Last of all came the king and queen of hearts. People that are cards. Alice wasn't sure what to do. Perhaps she should lie on the ground like the three gardeners, she thought, but she just stood still where she was and waited. When the kings and queens walked past Alice, they all stopped and looked at her. Who is this? The queen of hearts asked angrily. She asked a servant. The servant did not say anything. He just smiled and bowed. The queen looked at Alice. What is your name, child? She asked. My name is Alice, and said Alice very politely to herself. She said, these people are all quite flat. They are like the cards we play with. I think they are just made of paper. I don't have to be afraid of them. And who are these? said the queen, pointing to the three gardeners. They were lying around the rose tree. How should I know? said Alice. They are nothing to do with me. The queen is angry. 
The queen's face turned red. She was angry. Cut off her head, she shouted. How silly, said Alice very loudly. The queen was silent. The king put his hand on the queen's arm. He said to her quietly, Remember, my dear, she is only a child. The queen turned angrily away from him. She said to her servant, Turn them over. Very carefully, the servant turned the gardeners over with his foot. Get up, said the queen in a loud, high voice. The three gardeners immediately jumped up and began bowing to the king, the queen, the children, and everybody else. This did not seem to please the queen. She screamed, stop that, stop that. Then she walked to the rose tree. Where is the duchess? After looking at the roses carefully, she shouted, cut off their heads. Then she walked on. The poor gardeners ran to Alice for help. I won't let them do it, said Alice. She put the gardeners into a large flower pot. The three soldiers walked about looking for them. Then quietly they went away. Are their heads off? shouted the queen yes their heads are gone the soldiers shouted back good shouted the queen she looked at alice can you play croquet she shouted yes shouted alice come on then screamed the queen so alice joined the croquet party it's a very fine day said the white rabbit he was standing next to her very said alice where's the duchess quiet said the white rabbit in a very low voice he looked over his shoulder carefully as he spoke then he stood up next to alice's ear and whispered she is going to have her head cut off what for said alice well she hit the queen in the face the white rabbit began alice laughed loudly oh shh be quiet, the rabbit said in a frightened voice. The queen will hear you. You see, she came quite late. And the strange came. Get to your places, shouted the queen. Her voice was loud and angry. People began running about all over the garden and the game began. Alice thought she had never seen such a funny croquet game in all her life. Instead of croquet balls, they used little animals and instead of croquet sticks they used birds with long legs the most beautiful thing was to hold the birds when alice was ready to hit a little hedgehog the bird's head would turn in itself round it would look like at alice with such a funny look that she could not stop laughing alice soon decided that it was a very difficult game to play the players all played at the same time. No one waited for the other. Soon the queen became very angry. She began shouting, cut off his head or cut off her head. About once every minute, Alice began to feel very unhappy. She thought, what will happen to me? They like cutting off people's heads here. It is surprising that there is anyone left alive. She looked about to see if he could run away without being seen. Then she saw a very strange thing in the air. It was a smile. She said to herself, It's the Cheshire cat. Now I will have somebody to talk to. How are you getting on? Asked the cat. The Cheshire cat appears. Alice waited until the eyes appeared. In another minute, the whole head appeared. Alice began to tell the Cheshire cat about the game. I don't think they play well, Alice began, and they all fight with each other. They make so much noise that you can't hear yourself speak, and they don't seem to have any rules. How do you like the queen, said the cat in a low voice. I don't, said Alice. Just then she noticed that the queen was close behind her listening. Alice said loudly, the queen is very clever and I'm sure she is going to win the game. The queen smiled and walked on. Who are you talking to? said the queen. king. Coming up to Alice, he looked at the cat's head in surprise. It's a friend of mine, a Cheshire cat, said Alice. Would you like to meet it? I don't think I like it, said the king, but it may touch my hand. If it likes, I don't want to, said the cat. Don't look at me like that, said the king. A cat may look at a king, said Alice. The king was angry. He called to the queen who was passing. My dear queen, please ask somebody to take this cat away. Cut off its head. The queen knew only one way of doing this. Cut off its head, she said. I'll get one of the soldiers myself, said the king happily. He hurried away. 
Alice thought she would see how the game was going. A big crowd of people came to look at the Cheshire cat. Everyone began speaking at the same time. A soldier was saying, you can't cut off a head if there isn't body to cut it off from. The king said, anything that had, has a head can have its head cut off. The queen said, if that cat's head is not cut off quickly, everybody will have their heads cut off. Alice said, the cat belongs to the duchess. You should ask her about it. She is in prison, said the queen to the soldier. Go and get her. The cat's head began to disappear as soon as the soldier went away. By the time he had come back with the duchess, it had gone. The Griffin and the Mock Turtle The Ugly Duchess I am very happy to see you again, you dear old thing, the duchess said to Alice. She put her arm around Alice and they walked off together. Alice did not like the duchess walking so close to her. The duchess was very ugly. She was resting her chin on Alice's shoulder, but Alice wanted to be polite, so she didn't say anything. The game is going better now, Alice said. Suddenly, the duchess began to shake. Alice looked up. The queen was standing in front of them. She had an angry look on her face. Now, I tell you, the queen screamed, either you or your head must go in about half a second. The poor duchess was very frightened. She ran away as fast as she could. Come on, let's go on with the game, said the queen to Alice. Alice was afraid. She followed the queen back to the game slowly. The other people were sitting under the tree. As soon as they saw her, they started to play the game again. All the time they were playing, the queen shouted loudly to someone or other. Cut off his head. Cut off her head. Of course, as soon as she said this up, player had to leave. After a while, only the king, the queen and Alice were left. They are all forgiven. Then the queen suddenly said to Alice, Have you seen the mock turtle yet? No, I haven't, said Alice. Come on then, said the queen. Come with me and listen to, the, to his story. They walked off together. Alice heard the king tell one of the soldiers, Go and make anybody free. They are all forgiven. Oh, that's a good thing, Alice said to herself. She didn't want anyone to have his head cut off. Not long after that, they met a griffin. It was lying fast asleep in the sun. Get up, lazy thing, said the queen, and take this young lady to see the mock turtle. I must go back and see if all the heads have been cut off. She walked away, leaving Alice alone with the griffin. Just dreaming, the griffin sat up and slowly opened his eyes. He walked the queen until she had gone. Then he laughed. What fun, said the griffin, half to himself and half to Alice. What is the fun, said Alice. Why she is, said the griffin. She is just dreaming, you know. They never cut anybody's head off. Really? Come on. Everybody says, come on here, thought Alice as she followed him. Soon they saw the mock turtle sitting sadly all by himself on a little rock. As they came nearer, Alice could hear him making sad, low noises to himself. She felt very sorry for him. Why is he so sad? She asked the griffin, and the griffin answered almost the same way as before. He is just dreaming, you know. He hasn't got anything to be sad about, really. So they went up to the mock turtle. He looked at them with large eyes full of tears but said nothing. This young lady, said the griffin, wants to know all about you. I'll tell her, said the mock turtle. Sit down, both of you. Don't speak a word until I have finished. The mock turtle's a sad story. So they sat down. Nobody spoke for a few minutes. Alice thought to herself, I don't understand how he can ever finish if he doesn't begin. But she waited quietly and didn't say anything. Once, said the mock turtle, at last, I was a small turtle. These words were followed by a very long silence. When we were little, the mock turtle went on at last, crying now and then. We went to school in the sea. The teacher was an old turtle. We used to call him tortoise. Why did you call him tortoise if he wasn't one? Alice asked. He, she remembered that a tortoise was not the same as a turtle. We called him tortoise because he taught us, said the mock turtle angrily. Really? You are very stupid? Yes, I am surprised at you for asking such a simple question, added the griffin. Then they both sat silently and looked at poor Alice. She felt very unhappy. At last the griffin said to the mock turtle, continue, continue, old friend. Don't 
take all day to tell your story the mock turtle continued yes you might not believe it but we went to school in the sea i never said i didn't believe it said alice you did said the mock turtle keep quiet said the gryphon to alice before she could speak again lessons the mock turtle continued we went to school every day we had french music and washing you wouldn't have needed it much said alice living at the bottom of the sea oh the washing lessons cost too much for me said the mock turtle i didn't do them and how many hours every day did your lessons last said alice 10 hours the first day said the mock turtle 9 the next 8 the next and so on what a strange idea said alice that's why they are called lessons said the griffin because every day there is less of them they lessen every day this was quite a new idea to alice she thought about it for a few minutes then she said so the 11th day must have been a holiday of course it was said the mock turtle and what did you do on the 12th day alice asked she was very interested that's enough about lessons the griffin shouted let's go back to the palace they have caught a thief let's go and see what is happening he took alice by the hand and they hurried off to the palace who is it who is it alice asked as they ran the griffin only answered come on come on and ran faster who stole the tarts the judge and the jury, the king and queen of hearts were sitting on big special chairs when Alice and the griffin arrived. There was a great crowd around them, all sorts of little birds and animals, as well as all the card people. They, there was a sorry-looking person standing in front of them. His hands were tied together. A soldier stood on each side of him. That is the knave of hearts, the Griffin said to Alice quietly. Near the king was the white rabbit. He was holding a small trumpet and a piece of paper. In the middle of the room was a table with a large dish of tart on it. They looked very good. It made Alice quite hungry to look at them. I wish they would finish, he thought, and give us those tarts too. Then she began looking at everything around her while she was waiting. Alice guessed that this place must be a court. I know that person is, is the judge, she said to herself, because he is wearing that funny white wig on his head. The judge was the king, and that's the jury, thought Alice, looking at the twelve animals and birds. They were sitting together near the king and queen. Their job is to say if they think the knave really did steal the tarts or not. Silence in the court. The jury were all writing very busily in their little books. What are they doing? Alice asked the griffin. The court hasn't started yet. They are writing down their names. The griffin replied, they are frightened. They might forget them before the court ends. How stupid, Alice began. Suddenly the white rabbit cried out silence in the court. The king put on his glasses and said, let us begin. Then the white rabbit blew the trumpet three times. He opened the piece of paper and read the queen of hearts. He made some tarts all on a summer day. The knave of hearts. He stole those tarts and took them far away. Well, said the king to the jury. What do you think? Oh, not yet, not yet. The white rabbit said quickly. We have a lot to listen to before we come to that. Then he blew the trumpet again and called out loudly, Bring in the first witness. The Hatter in Court The first witness was the Hatter. He came in with a teacup in one hand and a piece of bread and jam in the other. Oh, I am sorry for bringing these in, he said to the king. I hadn't quite finished my tea. Well, you should have finished, said the king. When did you begin? The hatter looked at the march here, who had followed him into the court with the mouse on the 14th of March, I think he said. 15th, said the march here. 16th, added the mouse. Write that down, the king said to the jury. They quickly wrote down all three dates in their books and then added them up. Take off your hat, the king said to the hatter. It isn't mine, said the hatter. Then it must be stolen, shouted the king. The jury immediately wrote that down in their books. I keep them to sell, the hatter added. I'm a hatter. Here the queen put on her glasses. 
Tell us what you have to say, said the king, or I will have your head cut off. This did not seem to make the hatter any happier. He kept standing on one foot and then the other. He looked at the queen. He was quite frightened. He ate a large piece out of his teacup instead of the bread, bread and jam. Alice grows bigger. Just at this moment, Alice began to feel very strange. She was beginning to grow large again. I wish you wouldn't push me, said the mouse who was sitting next to her. You are hurting me. I can't help it, said Alice very shyly. I am going. You shouldn't go here, said the mouse. He got up very angrily and walked across to the other side of the court. All this time, the queen was looking very carefully at the hatter. Just as the mouse walked across the court, she said to one of the servants, Bring me the names of the singers in the last concert. When she said this, the hatter became so frightened that both his shoes fell off. Tell us what you have to say, the king repeated angrily, or I will have your head cut off. The frightened hatter dropped his teacup and bread and jam. He went down on one knee. I am a poor man, he began. You are a poor speaker, said the king. If that's all you know, you may finish. I would like to finish my tea first, said the hatter, looking at the queen, but she was busy reading the names of the singers. You may go, said the king. The hatter quickly left the court. He did not even wait to put his shoes on. Just cut his head off when he leaves the queen, added to one of the soldiers. But the hatter was gone. Call the next witness, said the, said the king. Alice watched the white rabbit as he looked at the names. Who would be the next witness? She was very surprised when he read out the name Alice. The last witness. Alice knows nothing. Here cried Alice, forgetting how large she had grown. She jumped up in such a hurry that she knocked over the jury box. All the jury animals fell out and lay on the ground. Oh, I'm sorry, said Alice. She began to pick them up as quickly as she could. We cannot continue, said the king, until all the jury are back in their correct places. Soon the jury were back in their places, their books and pencils were given back to them. They began to write down everything about the accident very carefully. What do you know about this? The king said to Alice. Nothing, said Alice. Nothing at all, asked the king. Nothing at all, repeated Alice. That's very important, the king said to the jury. The oldest rule, the white rabbit said very politely. Unimportant, you mean, of course? Unimportant? I meant, the king added quickly. He went on repeating to himself, important, unimportant, important. Some of the jury wrote down important, some wrote unimportant. Just then the king called out silence. Then he read out from his book, Rule 42, all people more than a mile high must leave. Everybody looked at Alice. I am not a mile high, said Alice. You are, said the king. Almost two miles high, said the queen. Well, I am not going, said Alice. And that isn't a real rule. You made it up just now. It's the oldest rule in the book, said the king. Then it should be number one, said Alice. The king's face turned white. He shut his book quickly. Tell me what you think, he said to the jury in a very quiet voice. The white rabbit jumped up in a great hurry. We still have something else, it said. This paper has just been picked up. What's in it, said the queen. I haven't opened it yet, said the white rabbit. But it seems to be a letter written by a thief to somebody. He opened the letter as he spoke. Then he added, it isn't a letter, it's a poem. The thief's poem. Oh, please, king, said the knave. I didn't write it. Read it, said the king. The white rabbit put on its glasses. Where shall I begin, please? It asked. Begin at the beginning, the king said seriously, and go on until you come to the end. Then stop. This is what the white rabbit read. They told me you had been to her and told my name to him. She said I was an honest man but said I could not swim. He told them that I had not gone. We know that it is true. If she should make me hurry on, what would she say to you? 
I gave her one, they gave him two. You gave us three or more, they are returned from him to you, though they were mine before. If she or I should ever be seen talking here once more, we hope that you will make us free just like we were before. Don't let them know she liked them best, for this must always be a secret hidden from the rest between yourself and me. This is very important, said the king in great excitement. The meaning. If anyone can explain it, said Alice, I'll give him some money. I don't believe there is any meaning in it. The jury are wrote down in their books. She doesn't believe that there is any meaning in it. If there is no meaning in it, said the king, we need not try to find any. And yet I seem to see some meaning in it. Look at these words, said I could not swim. You can't swim, can you? He added, turning to the knave. The knave shook his head sadly. He could not swim because he was a card made of paper. The king went on reading the poem to himself. We know that it is true. We must mean the jury. Of course, I gave her one. They gave him two. That must be what he did with the tarts, you know. But it goes on. They are returned from him to you, said Alice. Well, look here they are, said the king. He pointed to the tart on the table and he turned to the jury again. Now, did he steal the tarts or did, didn't he? No, no, said the queen. Cut off the knave's head first and then ask them. Stupid, stupid, shouted Alice. You must ask them first. Keep quiet, said the queen. I won't said Alice. Cut off her head. The queen screamed loudly. Nobody moved. Who cares about you? said Alice. She had grown to her full size by this time. You are just a box of cards. Alice wakes up. When she said this, all the cards flew up into the air and came flying down upon her. She gave a little cry and found herself lying on the bank of the river. Her sister was brushing away some leaves from her face. Wake up, Alice, dear, said her sister. Why, what a long sleep you have had. Oh, I have had such a strange dreams, said Alice. She told her sister all the strange things that you have just been reading about. When she had finished, her sister kissed her and said, It was a strange dream, dear, but now go and have your tea. It's getting late. So Alice got up. What a beautiful dream it had been, she thought. Thanks for listening. For new videos, don't forget to subscribe my channel. And if you like my videos, please share and like.